Hello, I'm Jason French, Curator of Collections here at Barringer Crawford Museum. Today we're giving you another one of those special chats that is a tour of the bead exhibit. With me today, I have this treasure of a woman, uh, Becky Hancock. Now, Becky, we've known Becky since we did a quilting exhibit a couple of years ago, but she also is a tremendous bead collector, and I would like to talk to Becky about her collection because much of what you see in this bead exhibit is here because of Becky Hancock. But I also want to ask her, how did you get started collecting beads, Becky? Well, when I was a child, I grew up in the country and used to love hiking around the woods and the creeks and I collected little stones and rocks and things that looked precious to me and pine cones and seeds and I would make jewelry and things out of them and I think that was when I first became fascinated with the art of adorning yourself and making jewelry and I always loved flashy sparkly things and I think what really sealed it is one time I was on a trip with my mom and my sisters to New York City and we went to this little shop and there were lots of beads and I just fell in love with this one strand of Chinese porcelain. I'll never forget them, but I wanted them so bad. I didn't have enough money. I asked my mom, but she was trying to be, you know, not spoil me. So she said no, but on that moment forward, I decided I was never going to be bead deprivised again or have bead deprivation. So that was my quest to collect as many beads as I could during my lifetime, and I think I have come pretty close to accomplishing that. So, that's it. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't want you to ever be bead deprived either. I know. And I... because you're not bead deprived, we're not bead deprived here, and we've got this beautiful exhibit to prove it. Yes, and I like sharing my beads with the world. I don't want anyone to be bead deprived. Right, right. And beads I think... are good therapy and they just make your life happier, I think. I think I think that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Now these this case of beads here, let me kind of get out of the way and then you can talk a little oh. bit about what do we have here? Because this is kind of a focal point of this particular room in the bead exhibit. This is my collection of African amber, which I totally love and was have been really drawn to since my bead collecting days. We have, and it's a kind of a combination, the amber beads that you find in Africa, there's different styles that come from different areas of the, of the continent. Like here we have some that, or down here, well, since you're down here, we have, these are types that are from like the Guinea-Bissau area. And then we have some like this green, which is very unusual. Amber comes in many different colors, uh, green, red, brown, gold, black, because of the plant fibers that are embedded in them as they're being formed. They're tree, fossilized tree resin. And so, okay, so these, and then these little diamonds are like, uh, little top looking ones, which are some of my favorites. Those are from Ethiopia. And then these diamond shaped ones are from Mauritania, used a lot by the Berbers tribe and some of the more uh, nomad, nomadic tribes. They like to sew them on their headdresses and they wear a lot of their amber because it's their wealth. And so when they're out trading they can use that as trade for goods or supplies and down here we have these are uh also ethiopian the drum style they seem to be predominantly from the ethiopia area and then we have some red amber and this there's kind of a cherry amber and black uh piece that's kind of a combination. I used to <clears throat> buy my amber a lot from an African trader named Baba Kamara. And I went to his, I used to go to Africa and collect things and bring them back. 
And Baba was like the best amber collector I ever knew. He would travel all over Africa, Northern Africa, and trade with all the nomadic tribes. And he, I went to his courtyard and he had all these beads laid out all over, all these amber. And he would sort through them and then he would like match them and put them all together and grad graduate them and make them just look beautiful. And uh, then he would go and travel and sell them. So he was, he was awesome, but he has passed on since. That's why I'm giving a little tribute to Baba because he was a great bead collector as well. Now, Becky, in this case, we've got a lot of beads from Africa. We're kind of in the, the African room here. And these beads here are pretty special. What can you tell us about them? These beads are indeed special, Jason. They are Kifa beads, and they're from Mauritania. And they are no longer made in this traditional method that you see here. But it's a method that was created about a thousand years ago. And since there was no like glass production actually in Africa, the Mauritanians would grind up already made glass and make glass powder and then mix it with a some kind of adhesive mordant. I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, they would make it like into a paint and they would tediously paint all the designs on these beads and then they would fire them in a little wood fire uh, kiln type thing that they would make by digging a hole in the ground and using wood fire and then kind of put them up on a, a, a grill type thing and fire them. And so they're, it's, they're very tedious and they were very expensive and mostly worn by royalty or like the chiefs or the higher echelon of the society there. But they're really beautiful and um, nowadays they are being reproduced in other ways. But this is, these are the old traditionally made ones. And these beads here are also from Mauritania. They're metal beads that are made with kind of a repuse type design in them. They're hollow and they are thin, made of like thin sheets of metal that have been tooled and then put together and they're very beautiful. And those are also uh, old and rare and were used a lot by the royalty. And then we have, moving along, we have some shoes that were made by the Yoruban tribe in Nigeria. And they do a lot of beading, a lot of kind of bead encrusted type items, such as shoes and then this hat or this crown that they call up above here. And uh, they make big beaded garments and they're just really adept at the doing bead encrusting designs. And then here we have the hand of Fatima, which is this necklace was made in Morocco and is also incorporated some vintage coral in there that probably came from somewhere in the Middle East, I would just, I would think. And then we have some two ivory bracelets that are probably the only ivory I own, but they were from West Africa, I believe, and they were actually given to me as a gift. And then the necklaces above the those in the background there, the one, the big pendant is a tiger claw from... Morocco, I believe. And then there's ostrich egg shell beads, which are made from ostrich eggs. And that's really a, a really cool pr process. The way they make those, they take the shells and make them into little chips and then they drill holes in them and string them onto a string and then roll them over a grinding stone until they all get to be the same circumference. They're really beautiful and they use are used a lot for embellishing items and those are made in Kenya. And the necklace below that is also, I believe, a tiger tooth necklace. 
and some bone. And then we have some bells and metal brass from, those are from Nigeria as well. And the big basket with the lid on it is also from Nigeria and the Yoruban tribe. They use the colors and the designs in them to tell stories. And I don't know all the specific colors and designs right offhand, but I'm sure that basket tells a good story. And these beads here are also from Mauritania. They're metal beads that are made with a kind of a repuse type design in them. They're hollow and they are thin, made of like thin sheets of metal that have been tooled and then put together and they're very beautiful. And those are also uh, old and rare and were used a lot by the royalty. And then we have, moving along, we have some shoes that were made by the Yoruban tribe in Nigeria. And they do a lot of beading, a lot of kind of bead encrusted type items, such as shoes and then this hat or this crown that they call up above here. And uh, they make big beaded garments and they're just really adept at the doing bead encrusting designs. And then here we have the hand of Fatima, which is this necklace was made in Morocco and is also incorporated some vintage coral in there that probably came from somewhere in the Middle East, I would, I would think. And then we have some two ivory bracelets that are probably the only ivory I own, but they were from West Africa, I believe, and they were actually given to me as a gift. And then the necklaces above the those in the background there, the one, the big pendant is a tiger claw from... Morocco, I believe. And then there's ostrich egg shell beads, which are made from ostrich eggs. And that's really a, a really cool pr process. The way they make those, they take the shells and make them into little chips and then they drill holes in them and string them onto a string and then roll them over a grinding stone until they all get to be the same circumference. They're really beautiful and they use are used a lot for embellishing items and those are made in Kenya. And the necklace below that is also, I believe, a tiger tooth necklace and some bone. And then we have some bells and metal brass from, those are from Nigeria as well. And the big basket with the lid on it is also from Nigeria and the Yoruban tribe. They use the colors and the designs in them to tell stories. And I don't know all the specific colors and designs right offhand, but I'm sure that basket tells a good story. And at the top here, we have another beaded crown from the Yoruban tribe in Nigeria. They were often wore by the royalty in the higher echelon of the tribe. Then we have uh, three samples of different styles of brass work that were done in, some of them are done in Nigeria and some of the, a lot of brass work is also done in Ghana. So we have those two areas, those two countries that are doing a lot of brass work. And then this necklace down here is a big bone necklace and this was definitely a chief's necklace. They liked to wear the big beads for the status and they wanted to just let their people know that they were awesome and they could handle anything coming their way so they like to just make big bead statements. That's what we call a statement bead or a statement necklace. So and these are ostrich egg, I mean ostrich bone beads that are from Nigeria, I believe. 
but I'm not exactly sure where they were made. I have to honestly tell you that. Then we have these big brass balls that are from Nigeria. And I love big beads, so I try to collect a lot of big beads. And that's some of the ones that I have. And then, let me see. Oh, yes, yeah, this, this is a beautiful sample of an Ethiopian milk jar or jug that is made from a gourd and then has leather strapping that's covered with cowrie shells, which are a very uh, widely used embellishment in Africa. They're found on the west coast on the, you know, the coastal areas, mostly west coast, I'd say, but I guess the other coast too. But originally the cowrie shells were used as money, but then when the British colonizers came, they made them stop using them for money and th because they wanted to introduce their own currency. But so then the cowrie shells, shells became very popular in embellishments and uh, as a kind of a embellishment that would give them protection as well. So, and then we have the, uh, these are some, some of the gold, or no, those are brass, those are brass from Nigeria. Then we have some big agate beads. These are big agates from Mali, West Africa. And uh, we have some bone beads in the background there. Those two white strands are from Kenya. They're batik bones from Kenya, which are very popular. And uh, then we have, going back to the seeds, a big, those are tagwa nut seeds from the tagwa palm in the coastal areas of Africa, very popular. They also come from uh, Ecuador. They're very popular down there, but these are African tagwa nuts. Then that little pouch in the middle is like a little talisman bag from Kenya made by the Maasai tribe. And it's like we'd carry like little amulets or little stones or talismans, good luck pieces, protective things that they would wear around their neck. And we have another beaded crown from the Yoruban tribe there in Nigeria. And then this big, that is a big brass that's from Nigeria and that was also like a chief's necklace. They would wear those big heavy necklaces and medallions like that 